You're listening to the Mind Your Business Podcast, episode number 76. And this one is a bonus episode. So get ready, folks. Today, we're talking all about creating breakthroughs with surveys. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and I've built a seven-figure internet business that offers the financial freedom to do what I want, when I want. And I'm the first to say that hard work and hustle are not essential ingredients for your success. So how do you build a thriving business from the inside out? This is the Mind Your Business podcast featuring myself and co-host Phoebe Morocek. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, James Wetmore here, and this is the Mind Your Business podcast. And today is a bonus episode where we're going to talk all about super simple surveys. Now, if you are marketing yourself online and you feel like your message is falling flat, right? Like you feel your shit is so good and you've got the best products out there, but no one seems to get it. They don't get your offer and you're looking for a way that you can start connecting with your customers, your prospects, your list and your community at a deeper level where you can have more effective messaging and obviously more sales. Well, it all begins with knowing your audience, speaking to the conversation that's already in their mind and their hearts. And that starts with a survey. In fact, when you start doing surveys, you're going to feel like it's cheating. So that's exactly what we are going to be talking about today on this bonus episode. But first, I wanted to give a huge shout out to one of our listeners, Nikki Rowley, who just left us a five-star review on iTunes. Nikki said, this podcast has completely changed my life. James and Phoebe are amazing people who share their struggles and expertise in a way that hits you in the heart. If you're a business owner, this podcast is a game changer. The energy from this podcasting community is incredibly inspiring. This should be a mandatory course for all business owners. Thank you, James and Phoebe. Well, thank you, Nikki. We truly appreciate the super kind words and the awesome five-star review on iTunes. If you haven't left us a review yet, well, I invite you to do that now. Every one of those reviews helps us get boosted in the rankings so we can spread our message with more people. Just head over to jameswedmore.com forward slash iTunes and share your review there. Thank you so much. All right, let's get into this quick bonus episode. I've got a lot to go over. We're talking about the power of surveys, the right questions to ask, how to ask those questions so you actually get people to fill out your survey, the software I use and recommend, and most importantly, how to interpret the answers. We got a lot to go over and we're gonna do this really quickly. And the reason I'm doing this bonus episode first and foremost is because I'm doing a round of surveys and you know, I kind of like to share what I'm doing when I'm doing it especially when it's working. And the whole concept of survey is probably nothing new. In fact, it's one of the least sexiest things that we can talk about. When I first started my business 10 years ago, people were talking about surveys then. And it's like the only thing left. You know, MySpace isn't really around. People don't talk about Twitter as much as they used to back then. But surveys, you know, it's one of these things that stands the test of internet time, isn't it? But most people hear it and they go, yeah, I've already learned that. I've already heard that. Oh, I know I'm supposed to do a survey. Or worse, they say, oh, I've done a survey. Really? When? You have to understand that, especially depending on the niche you're in, that it's an ever-changing, evolving, morphing landscape that is your marketplace, especially in the online marketing arena. Oh, my goodness. Like We've done more surveys in the past six or seven months than I have in years. And I'm so fascinated to see how the conversation changes. Wow. And so here I am, I've been doing these surveys and I'm just going to kind of share with you what's working. We're going to do some really cool stuff. I'm actually going to, by the end of this, pick a random survey response. We'll definitely leave it totally anonymous. And I'm going to kind of share how I interpret the data so you get to kind of understand. Okay. Now, If you want to go deeper with this, the first thing I recommend is Ryan Levesque's book, Ask. 
Ryan is a good friend of mine, and the book is phenomenal. It'll blow your mind. I recommend it all the time. We'll link it up in the show notes. But what he's able to do is what I believe is the future, oh, the future of online marketing. He is bringing sexy back when it comes to surveys, and you will see that very soon. Because what he really does is offer some very unique strategies on how to customize and segment your audience based on the type of results that they have. And this is going to be such a game changer. I think it's something that's very new still. And you're going to see this being like, well, if you're not doing it, you're in big trouble. We just implemented his strategy that he teaches in Ask during our last launch. It was the biggest launch we've ever had. It broke all of our PRs, our personal records. So... Please read that book. Ryan is a smart dude. Okay, let's get into the first piece of this. The questions that you ask. I'm actually doing something kind of cool, a little different here. We did two surveys. We did, you know, the one that's kind of popular, right? That Ryan really recommends and teaches and promotes, which is the one question survey. Then I did a six question survey and we did this to two different segments of my audience. So it's really important. I think that's a piece that we're not really going to talk too much about, but a little bit is that, you know, you have your list, no matter if you're like, James, I only have 50 people on my list. That's fine. You might have segments within there already. You might have 10 customers and 40 subscribers. Well, you want to ask different questions or at least create a different survey with the same questions to those different audiences. Because if you teach, let's say, beauty tutorials to young women who want to learn how to apply makeup, someone who hasn't purchased your course and gone through it is going to have different problems and struggles than someone who has. And that's huge, right? To be able to have survey results from past customers who have completed one of your programs, your coaching programs, your membership site, etc. Well, now you might have a new offer for them a new back-end offer, a higher-level coaching program, et cetera. So you always want to segment your audiences before you just, you know, fire hose blanket this question to everybody. That is the pre-step, okay? Who am I going to be asking wherein that by asking this segment, it's going to make a huge difference on what their answers are. Then we can get into the question. So the first one is this, when it comes to blank, what is the number one biggest struggle or frustration you have right now, or you are facing right now. Some general gist of that. You know, Ryan really stresses this. Man, I just resonate with this so much. He says, you know, if you (laughs) ask nine out of 10 people on the street, like, what do they like doing? What are their goals? What do they want more of? Most people stumble. Most people have a bit of a blank stare When you ask them that question, they're stumped. That's how you stump somebody. But you ask them, what are they struggling with? what's pissing them off and they won't shut up right now it's a brain our brains are wired for survival so we're always looking to avoid the things that we don't like until you jump into the pool of personal development and listen to podcasts like this one then that's what our brain does it's kind of the default settings out of the box it's kind of looking at all the negative things and thinking that if it identifies and categorizes all those negative things it can start to avoid them And so when you ask someone, what is the biggest thing you're struggling with right now? They're like, how much time you got, right? So now your job is, when you ask this question, to get really specific on the topic, okay? Because if you just say, hey, what is the biggest thing you're struggling with? And you're in, let's say, the makeup tutorial niche, people are going to say like, well, my boyfriend won't call me back or my parents are grounding me, right? I don't know. This is just the niche I chose for today's episode off the top of my head. So you see, you got to get really specific. So when you say when it comes to eyeshadow or when it comes to, boy, I don't know this niche at all, but when it comes, I really don't. When it comes to applying makeup, when it comes to getting ready for a date, right? The more specific that you phrase the question, the more specific answers that you're going to get back. Okay, so when it comes to creating YouTube videos to build your brand, what is the number one biggest struggle or frustration or obstacle you're currently dealing with? So that's the question, right? You can figure out the blank, right? I hope you should. Okay, then you want to give them some very specific instructions. Please be as detailed as 
possible. You even want to deter them from saying, please avoid one word answers such as time, money, right? Kind of want to rub their nose in it. And you still get those answers, by the way. I, I actually just throw those answers away because they're not paying attention. Okay, now... What I like, and we'll talk about this in the software aspect of it, of what survey software to use, is I like this one question to be by itself on one page. And then they click submit or the next button, and it has two follow-ups. The first one is asking them which of the following best describes something about them, right? So if this is me asking a question, when it comes to video marketing, what is your number one biggest struggle or hurdle when they type in their answer and again the longer the better when they click submit the next question should be which of the following best describes you i'm a local business owner i'm an online business owner i'm just getting started i'm a youtube star i'm a musician i'm a comedian right any of these niches or sub niches and you want to start to gather that data you know really really label that and then of course the third is to ask for their name email, and phone number. And this you want to make optional. Okay, so this is what Ryan teaches in his Ask book. So I'm going over this really briefly because I want to get into my six-question survey that we did. But this is a powerful, simple, simple one. Now, one of the things Ryan teaches here is that you make it optional for them to give you their contact info so that the people who do give it to you, you kind of star those as a more qualified survey answer. And we can maybe talk to that a little bit in just a second. I want to throw out another survey that we did. This is a little longer. It's six questions. And any variation of these questions is going to be really great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these six questions. And then I'm going to tell you what the intention or purpose is. Again, when you ask the what's the number one biggest struggle, you're talking to the pain and their problem. And your entire job is about solving the problem. So your audience will tell you with a little interpretation, right? A little comprehension skills, you can sell anything to anybody because you're selling what they need, what they're struggling with, the solution to that, the removal of that. So let's take a look at the six question survey. First question, really simple. Have you ever tried blank? And if not, why? Or if no, why not? Okay, so... Have you ever tried using YouTube to market your business online? If no, why not? Now, what is this question answering? Well, first of all, it qualifies our prospect. If I want to work with people that have only started using YouTube, well, then I'm going to pay more attention to the people who say yes. But if they answered no and tell me why not, well, ladies and gentlemen, you just have your list of objections. They will tell you why they're not doing it. And those are your objections. And we're not going to talk about it in this episode, but being able to identify and destroy, bust those objections is so powerful. Number two, you're going to say, what has, it's the same question as the previous one, the Ryan Levesque survey. What is the biggest obstacle or struggle that you're currently facing with YouTube, right? Okay. And then the third question is, and what are the negative consequences of this struggle? Or any variation, right? So again, we're looking for the problem in question two, the source of the pain. And question three, we're trying to dig it deeper. What are the negative consequences? We're really looking at why is this such a problem for you? What is it you're afraid is going to happen? When you can start to understand what they're trying to avoid, what their biggest fears are, super powerful. And then the next question is, what is your ideal solution to this problem? And that'll blow your mind right there. What is your ideal solution? Okay. They will begin to tell you what it is that they're looking for. Okay. <laughs> it's really easy. I know. It, that's why it feels like cheating. Okay. The next question is what are the positive consequences and results of solving this problem? Now we're trying to look for where are they headed? Where are they trying to move towards? Everything, guys, is about moving away from what they don't want and moving towards what they do want. Let them tell you what those two points are, what the avoidance and the moving towards points are, okay? And then the last question is, and I love this, my favorite question. If we were to sit down at a coffee shop for 20 minutes, if we could talk on the phone, And you had the chance to ask me one question. What would it be? 
there's enough content for your podcast, YouTube video, blog, email newsletter for months and months and months. Okay, so there's two types of surveys. You don't have to use both of them. You can try them both out. You can use one. You can use them all. You can use a combination, whatever. But let's talk really briefly about how to do this. I think you need to be sending the survey to your existing audience only. I see a lot of people making, in my opinion, a big fat mistake by just going into someone else's Facebook group and saying, hey, let me ask you a question. Hey, blah, 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 right? Now, the reason is, is because when you build an audience, you are attracting a certain type of person, okay? So the people filling out your survey in some other group, first of all, it's just like bad etiquette. Whenever I see someone do it, I'm like, come on. But also, that might not be your ideal customer, okay? Like, that's a huge thing you got to figure out. But the people that are already drawn to you, the people that are already resonating with you, you got to know more about what they're dealing with. So even if you have a small email list, you know, if you have your own Facebook group or community or fan page or Instagram, whatever it is, right? Start with what you got. And the simple answer is to ask. Do not try and, you know, oh, I'll give you a $5 cookie (laughs) or $5 Amazon gift card or some stupid little incentive because that's the only reason they're going to fill it out. And those people are not the ones you want to attract. You want to attract the ones that really want to have a conversation with you. They really want to spill their guts and you just say, hey, I'm here to listen. Okay, so I wanted to go really deeper on this. So I've put together a powerful little training and process guide to show you how to do this. Basically, I just called it getting started with surveys. So if you're struggling to get started anywhere in your business, right? That's a big thing that we got from our surveys is like, I'm struggling just to get started. I can't stress enough that getting the survey out there, asking these powerful questions is the place to begin. But if you're also someone who's struggling to find your niche, like really say like, how deep in my niche should I go? Where should I really position myself in the marketplace? Or what marketplace do I even go into? Or you're looking to nail down your offer. You don't really know what or maybe you have a lot of offers and you can't figure out yet which one to start with, you're going to love this. So this is a free PDF I put together just for you guys, just for our listeners, just for this episode. You can grab it over at jameswedmore.com forward slash survey. Opt in and I'm going to show you the exact emails I used, the exact surveys, and a couple other cool bonus training, including a really cool strategy that you could use so that when you're building your list moving forward, how you can continually get new survey responses inside your funnels and opt-ins as well. So that's over at jameswedmore.com forward slash survey. Okay, what I want to do right now is just talk briefly about three software platforms that you can use. Google Forms is free. It's a great place to start, but I'm going to really encourage you to go over to either SurveyMonkey or SurveyFunnel.com. Io surveymonkey.com or surveyfunnel.io. And the reason is, is because I really like the strategy or the layout of having one question per page. When people see six questions on a page, they're immediately overwhelmed. They go, oh, look at all this stuff I got to fill out. And they leave. Okay. One question per page. I don't think Google Forms can do that. If it can, you know, I stand corrected, but I'm pretty sure even though it's free, it doesn't allow you to create steps, one question on a page. SurveyMonkey.com and SurveyFunnel.io, really easy to set up. Plus, SurveyFunnel has a bunch of other really cool survey functions that we're not going to talk about here today. So lastly, on this little episode, I want to talk about what I think is the missing piece. We'll just touch into this. And again, we've got more training over at jameswilmer.com forward slash survey, a free little PDF we put together for you. But I want to talk about how to interpret your survey results. Okay, so step one with this is to just read them all. And it also helps, like I print them out. And if you could read the question every time or kind of get a gist of the question before you answer it, especially if you're doing the six question survey, that's going to really help. Read them out loud, read them slowly, or better yet, have someone read them to you. The more you kind of just sit with this, and I think this is something that Ryan says, is just kind of let them wash over you. Just be with them. Try not to judge them. That can be hard. And then try not to be the doctor prescribing the solution before they've, you know, you finish the 
question or the answer, okay? Just be present to what the words are, what people are talking about. Sometimes people can't communicate fully what they're really dealing with, but you can feel the energy and the emotion behind it, okay? Then, once you go through all of them at least once, slowly, then what I do is I go through one question at a time. So if I'm doing the six-question survey, I start with the biggest obstacle, the number one struggle, right? And I read each one of those, and I tally up the answers to see what are the most popular problems. That will be super powerful. You know, if 40% of your surveys have the same problem, they're talking about the same theme, the same kind of thing, that's a huge opportunity for you. And you won't know what the most popular ones are until you read out every single answer and tally up how many people said each one. That is huge. Then, this is a very powerful exercise. I talked about this on my Instagram stories. I created a big poster board, and I drew a line down the middle. And on the left-hand side, I wrote out all the problems, right? Everything that people were struggling with. And then on the right side, I wrote down a list of all the possible solutions, training, or content, or answers I could provide that would give a solution to that problem. And this is so powerful for so many reasons because this could be your next offer, you know, your next course. This could be your next podcast. This could be your next webinar, your next blog post, or your next email. This is how you come up with content. This is how you come up with your products. Stop guessing. Stop putting a blindfold on and throwing a dart against the wall to see where it lands. And just ask. Get clear on what they're struggling with by asking them. And then sit there and say, what is the best way I could solve this? What could I teach? What value could I deliver in order to solve this problem? Now, I wanted to give a quick hint that a lot of the problems that I noticed when I say, what's your biggest struggle? Those were actually objections. Like when you realize like part of it is getting clear on what they want. Like, so what are they really after? What's the direction they're headed for? What are they craving, yearning? What are they putting on their vision boards or what goals are they writing down? And then when you ask them what the problem is, it's what they perceive is in the way. And a lot of times these are just objections. So for example, a lot of people said time, right? I don't have the time or it's taking too much time. Well, that's a problem. But when you offer a solution, part of what you need to do in your solution is show them a quicker way, right? If you show someone how to apply makeup and they say, sometimes I don't have the time, well, you need to show them how to apply makeup in three minutes or less or something, you know, like that, how to do it quicker, right? If their problem is they don't have enough money or if that getting to their goal is costing them too much money, then you need to show them a cheaper way. These are objections that they're having. I would do this, but I don't have the time. I would do this, but I don't have the money. And part of it is being able to talk to that. So, so important. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do here is to actually read one of the responses to my survey here and kind of share with you how I interpret it, right? So this is a six-question survey. I'm going to go through each question and each answer. Again, we're keeping it totally anonymous. I just wanted to share the answers and really my insight into it. So the first question was, have you ever tried creating and launching your own digital courses or online membership programs? Their answer was yes. Well, that's good. They just said yes, one word. Okay, so then I said, when it comes to creating and launching your own programs, what has been your biggest obstacle or struggle? And the answer was better marketing strategies and just needing to create a bigger audience. 
Well, this came up a lot was, you know, better marketing, more marketing, a marketing strategy. And, you know, marketing itself is such a vague, broad word, right? And it's kind of, it's just kind of like this catch-all solution, which we all know, like, this is dangerous. Hey, can I just hire someone to market and sell my stuff for me? Yeah, good luck with that, right? We need to learn some of this ourselves. So what I really focused on here is needing to create a bigger audience. So that's what they're telling me they want. Now, I asked, what is the biggest obstacle? And notice how some people go into what they need. So we have to kind of, you know, mold this or massage it a little bit. They're trying, I can assume they're trying to create a bigger audience and they're struggling with that. That they're maybe putting some stuff out there on social media, right? So now I kind of have to fill in the gaps and kind of imagine what the struggle or obstacle is like, right? What attempts have they made? Maybe they ran some Facebook ads and lost some money. Maybe they started a podcast and no one downloaded it. Maybe they're putting stuff on social media and it's not really catching on, okay? But they know they still need to create a bigger audience or that's also the belief that they have that if I create a bigger audience, it will solve all my problems. So it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I need to solve the problem of getting them a bigger audience, maybe this could be used as an objection. Think about this for a moment. So this is kind of just where I let my brain go, is what if I could show this person how to increase sales and revenue with the audience they already have? Would they still need a bigger audience? Well, sure, of course, but would it be an obstacle? Okay, so it's not just necessarily looking at saying, they're telling me to create a bigger audience, so I'm going to show them how to create a bigger audience. It could be how to generate more revenue or more sales with the size of the audience you have. In fact, when I ask the next question, what are the negative consequences of not solving this problem? Their answer was simple, less revenue than I'd like. So that's the real problem here. They've just in their mind made the conclusion a bigger audience means more revenue. Ah, so revenue is really the thing they're struggling with. They want more revenue and they're not making as much as they like. Okay, got it. You see how we're kind of talking this out here? Okay, then here we go. Ideal solution. What is your ideal solution? Now, again, they're in a theory and it's not entirely inaccurate, but it's their world that if I increase my audience, I will make more money. Okay, now that we know that, what is their answer to the question, what is the ideal solution? Here's what they said. Increase my marketing efforts, right? Because that was their biggest obstacle was better marketing strategies. So the ideal solution would be to increase my marketing efforts, in parentheses, working smarter, not harder, so my products and services can reach more people and have a bigger impact. Great, so they're telling us more about what they want. I want my stuff to reach more people and have a bigger impact. Yeah, we get that a lot. Now, the thing is that if you have a bigger audience and you put your product in front of those people and they don't buy it, have we solved the problem? No. And that's something that people tend to leave out or just assume is that if I have a bigger audience, it will automatically mean more sales, right? So just something to, you know, kind of keep in mind. Okay, what are the positive consequences and results? Freedom and independence for my family. You know, that's really asking why is this important to you? What are you moving towards? Freedom. Now, then the last question is, if you could sit down, you could ask me any question you want, what would it be? And here's the answer, or here's what they want to ask me. When you look back on your journey as an entrepreneur, what is the one thing you wish you would have started doing sooner? Oh, I love it. The answer is simple. I would have asked for money sooner. I would have sold sooner and I would have raised my prices sooner. That's an easy one. 
but that is great. In fact, I'll just let you in on a little bit here. That is the number one question that people proposed to me. And it's very fascinating. You know, now that I've had 10 years of experience in an online business, I've been running businesses or any entrepreneurial venture for as long as I could walk, basically. I see the gap of like people being able to say like, oh, I can learn a lot from you, James, but you have a team, you have an office, you have more of a budget, you have a reputation, you have an authority. So I can't relate to all that. How do I just get started? And so from that energy, they really ask the question, well, if you had to start all over again, what would you do differently? Because that's where they're at and they want to know what the advice for someone just starting out would be. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, it's so important to ask that final question because it's not just about the question they're asking, but what would cause them to ask such a question? And there you go. So I hope me just running through one of these was helpful, was insightful. Maybe you picked up something completely differently. But here I am. I have three or 400 survey responses from just a small targeted audience, a couple of different small targeted audiences on my list. I didn't want any more because it's taken me just about all week to go through them, like six days so far, and I'm not done. So it's not about the quantity here. It is about the quality that you put into the comprehension or the interpretation of these surveys. And as hard as it is, it really is hard for me to want to just like write down the answer and say, I know what they need. I'm really just letting this continue to wash over me and just being really present, right? Really present to what it is that they need. I hope this has been a helpful episode. I had posted this on Instagram, my Instagram stories saying I might do a podcast about this and I had a bunch of hell yeses. So I decided to do it. I just, I can't stress enough how important it is. I really, really want to encourage you in the, you know, like a, let's just do like a seven day accountability challenge to get a survey out to your audience in the next seven days or less. It's so easy. And I want to walk you through all the steps to do that right now. Head on over to jameswedmore.com forward slash survey. That way I can just give you the copy, the action items, the surveys, everything you need to execute this immediately. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.